While the core of this tutorial is more about mastering than it is about T-Racks, we're just going to do a little rundown on the basics of T-Racks for those who aren't familiar. This won't be a proper substitute for not reading the manual, and I won't cover every little intricacy that's in here, but for the basics it will get you started. When you open T-Racks, unless you're opening a saved document, you initially get this empty frame, and from there you need to import the audio you intend to work on, and there's two ways to do that. The first is using this load button down here to bring up the standard load save dialog and import this way. So I can just click here, and there's a tune, double click on that, and it's straight in. Alternatively, I can remove from there using the same trick. So click on the audio you wish to remove and click the remove button. You'll get a dialog asking you to confirm, and we say yes, we want to remove that. The other way to import is to drag files straight into T-Rex from your desktop. So I'll switch over. There's my desktop there, and I'll say grab this track and drop it into the list, and there we go another one into the list and so on. But what's even better about this is you don't actually have to drop it over the list. Anywhere in the entire T-Rex GUI is fine. So I'll grab this top one and I'll you know, let go over here, straight into the list. Grab this one down here and you know, go right to the top of T-Rex, drop it there, straight into the list. So fantastic, you don't have to be super accurate, just drag it over the GUI and you'll be fine. Now you can't reorder the tracks once they're in this list, but really there's no need to. This has nothing to do with the order that your CD will run, and every file is separate in t rex and can each run its own chain of effects. So the order of this list is largely irrelevant. You can jump from 1 to 4 to 3 as you're playing, so it simply doesn't matter. Now once a file's in t rex you can adjust in and out points for the file, and in and out fades. So let's say we were trimming up this song, we can zoom in and we can grab this little arrow here, and we can see there's a bit of dead space before the actual start of the track. Fine, we'll grab that, and we'll make the in point right there. We can zoom right in even more and get very close. And from here, we could, if we chose to, grab the fade, and let's say, set a fade. So have a quick listen to this before the fade. Memoir. Okay, so a little sort of mmm sound leading into it. I can actually create a fade that finishes right at the point of the impact there. Okay, and vice versa at the other end. We can see there's a bit of dead space there, so we'll zoom out, back to the front, and yep, I'll have to zoom out further than that. We'll come to the end, oh, still quite a lot. So I'll grab the out marker, and keep coming, say to about there, and even there, who knows. Let's play that. So he's got quite a long fade on that track. But let's pretend we wanted to get out quicker, so we'll grab that and even move the out point closer so there's less fading. Try now. There is someone just like me. And we're fading there. Okay, now here we can choose the type of fade in or fade out shape. So if I click on here, we've got a linear that it's set to now, but if I choose I can go for a more exponential feel by clicking on that, and now it'll fade out quicker. Yep, get softer faster, or even more so. This one will get quite soft quite quick, and then the actual soft part of the fade will take longer to go out. There, it's just about gone already. Still hanging in there just. While we're mastering, we might want to set up a loop point within the single track that might, say, be the loudest part of the song, you know, going over and over, or a certain part we're having trouble with, or whatever. So if we switch on the loop mode from here, and I'll zoom out so we can see what's going on. Right, now we've got some yellow loop points, an in and an out at the other end, which we're a little bit too far out to see. There it is. So, for instance, in this track, there's a soft section here, a loud section here. If we wanted to focus our attention on just the loud section while we're doing the core of our mastering, we can set the loop out there, the loop in there, and it will loop within that point. So even if I start near the end of the loop now, it'll loop back to the top and indefinitely loop within those two points. as you can see, and then it will just keep going until we hit stop or start our loop again. Now to the core of T-Rex, which of course is its processors, they're very simple to operate. You've got 12 slots here. You can see the first four are labeled A and B, 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, so that creates eight. So they're what's called in parallel, A's and B's, and then following those, we've got four more points in series. So if I click the show chain button here, you'll get a little dialogue of what's actually going on. 
So there's 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, and so on. And once we get to 3, then to 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 appear in series after that. And to insert a plugin is as simple as just clicking on one of these down arrows here. In this case, I'm on A. If I wanted to talk to B, I would click on that one and then I'd be programming B. But let's go back to 1A, click on here, and choose the processor of your choice. So let's say linear phase EQ. And up it comes. Now if we look at our show chain, we can see that in that first slot, there's a linear phase EQ. To remove it, simply go here and either say empty or switch it to another one. So let's say we don't want linear phase EQ, we really want classic equalizer. That just switches it over and this little graphic here just implies the look of the plugin so you know which one you've got. Or to get rid of it altogether, empty. Now understand that in T-Rex, as I mentioned, each track down here has its own chain of plugins. So at the moment we're on the track You Knew Me, and I might say a classic compressor can go there, and in this slot here we'll go classic multiband limiter, and at the end here we'll put a brick wall limiter. Now as soon as I click to another track, say Heart and Soul number two, they're all gone. It's a completely independent thing, and this is the way you can master with T-Rex and have so much power and flexibility. So this one I'll go brick wall limiter there, which makes absolutely no sense, but I'm just being random at the moment. So I'm just dropping some plugins in. Right, now as we can see, I can click between here and here, and those two tracks are totally independent of each other with completely independent processing chains. A great feature up here is the compare function, which allows us to volume match the dry sound with our process sound that we're working on. Because in mastering, as we're pumping things up, things get louder and louder, when we want to compare with what we started with, it's generally much, much softer. And our brains are often tricked into thinking that whatever's louder is better. This function allows us to pump up the level of the original sound, so it more approximates the level we're achieving with our mastered sound. Hence, we can make a more informed decision as to whether we're actually improving things or just making them louder. Now down here, we've got a fantastic metering section in T-Rex. I'll get some volumes happening so we can see. So we've got peak meters here. We've got an RMS meter down here, we've got an excellent new perceived loudness meter here, which we will talk about in a little bit better detail soon. Over here is a phase scope, correlation meter just to make sure we've got things happening in positive phase, and a spectrum analyzer over here. And under this settings tab, very fine controls for all of these. The loudness suggestion of the loudness meter, and various settings for the analyzer, phase meter and peak meters. Under the file menu, which is just above your field of vision here, but that's the file menu, trust me, we've got the project properties option. This is where we set what we want to output at the end of our exercise. So in our case, we're set to a 16-bit WAV file. If we were going to make a 16-bit WAV file, we would want dithering on, and we'll discuss more about dithering in a later tutorial. We have various choices, including the standard popular audio file format, such as WAV, AIF, Sound Designer 2, and so on. Now here under the Preferences tab, we can choose T-Rex's quality versus CPU power trade-offs and also latency issues. Now in a straight mastering situation, latency is not usually a problem. So we don't necessarily want the lowest latency, we arguably want the highest latency if it gives us a much better quality product. So we would choose lowest latency off in this case. We'll take oversampling and linear phase on to get the highest quality results. And these other options you can learn more about from the manual. Now let's say we've finished our mastering project and we want to output our results. We can go over here to the Process button. Now this is set to what we chose in our Project Properties dialog, which we left as Wave. I turned dithering on, it's 44.116 bit. So at this point we can output either the current file, so it's Heart and Soul, because that's the one that's highlighted here, or we can just say everything, I've worked on every single track, I want to output every single one. So we just need to choose an output path for our finished tracks. It's going to append the file name underscore T-Rex so we don't confuse them with the original file. So heartandsoul.wav will turn into heartandsoul underscore T-Rex.wav. And all the files will end up in the directory that we choose here. And that's pretty much the fast view of most of the things in T-Rex. And I'll see you in the next tutorial as we start getting into things.